Okay, what we have here is an entire grouping of Chinese, of modern Chinese circus combatants from the PLN, the People's Republic Army Navy, People's Liberation Army Navy, they call it the Plan. That would be the Chinese Navy. And I'm going to start back about the year 2000 and go forward to what they are doing today. Back in that time, they had built their first, oh, really modern destroyer. It was the Type 52. I don't show it here. It had uh, a couple of French uh, eight-cell missile launchers launching Crotile uh, missiles. Uh, <clears throat> wasn't even in that time frame around the year 2000 a very effective or very modern so what they did is they bought four ultimately of these vessels we'll move them back these are Sovremini uh, Russian vessels that they bought the Sovremini was probably the most effective destroyer that the Russians built during the Cold War and as I say the Chinese bought four of them two of the earlier versions, and then right after 2000, they bought two of the most modern, and the Russians sold them to them because they were money-strapped. Now, a lot of people wondered whether the Chinese would keep them, particularly after building some of these more modern vessels we'll look at in a minute. And the answer to that is a resounding yes, because what they've done is where there used to be a single sidearm launcher to launch the Russian anti-aircraft missiles. The Chinese have now put four and aft 16 vertical launch cells, so they have 32 vertical launch cells that launch their missiles and not the Russian missiles. So logistically, these uh, will work in to the Chinese logistics chains. They also took off the eight uh, anti-surface, anti-shipping missiles and put in eight of their own. And for close-in weapon systems, they put in their own, uh, it's sort of like a ram launcher that they built. We first saw it when they put it on uh, their carrier. Well, now they have put them uh, one forward here and then two of their 30 millimeter close-in weapon guns on the rear. So what they've done is they've taken one of the Sovremini so far and turned it into a Chinese Sovremini. And we expect they're going to do it to all four. <clears throat> in the meantime, while they were building those at about the same time in 2002 to 2004, they built this next um, destroyer, which was also very similar you see the sidearm launcher on that ship there and in the aft. That's what they used to have on the Sovereminis. Well, these are newer vessels. The difference between those vessels and this Sovereminy was that they, from the get-go, had 16 anti-surface missiles that the Chinese put that were their own. So we expect that they will probably upgrade this these two ships, they only built two of them, so that these two ships will probably be upgraded like the Russian ships were to have 32 VLS missiles, which will extend their life. After that, the Chinese built the Type 052B, and that's what this is. The one that you're looking at over here was the Type 051B. This is the Type 052B. And they built this as a stopgap for the other uh, ship that's behind it. And they did that because they were concerned about the engine that they were putting in that second ship. Uh, because it was a turbine, gas turbine engine, whereas this is a diesel. And so they built two of these, and two of these, which we'll get to in a minute. These have 48 
VLS launchers, but you'll notice they have a normal uh, radar on it, no APARs, and eight anti-surface missiles. Well, after building two of these, they stopped building them. That's because they had built this vessel, which was the type O-52C. And the O-52C has 48 vertical launch cells and carries its own APARs very similar to the type, the Burke type weapons. In fact, the the way these are situated on the ship are very similar to the Burke class. And they have their own uh, automated weapon system. They built a total of six of these and they were very satisfied with it. And so they came out with the Type 052D, which is more akin to their version of the Aegis system that we have, larger APARs, a different, uh, rather than the round uh, vertical launch, they adopted a smaller square vertical launch similar to the MK-41 that the U.S. uses. A 5-inch gun, a 30-millimeter uh, close-in weapon system, 64 vertical launch cells, and a ram-type defensive weapon with a single helicopter and hangar on the rear end of this thing. They are very satisfied with these uh, ships, and they have built 12 of them. Six more are building currently, and we expect that they will build as many as 30 of these. So this, this has become the uh, medium to large destroyer of choice for the Chinese Navy, the Type 052D. And that led directly to the building of this last one, which is the Type 055. This is a much larger vessel, has even larger APARs, and is more akin to the Ticonderoga uh, cruiser that we have. This has 112 vertical launch cells, and on both the Type 052D and this Type 55, they can launch various types of weapons from them. Whether they can quad pack them with a smaller medium range missile, we don't know, but we do know that they can launch anti surface missiles and uh, sub rock anti submarine missiles and uh, long range anti aircraft missiles from those cells. And so they would mix anti surface missiles in with them depending on the mission. The other important thing about this is this uh, ship carries two large helicopters, uh, the Z-18, which is similar to the Merlin, uh, perhaps not as good in electronics, but it can carry four of the Japanese torpedoes, and it can carry them to some distance. So they've learned a a lesson from the United States and they carry two of those instead of just one so that if they find a contact they can rotate the helicopters onto that contact and not lose uh, sight of it. They also have a strong uh, self-defense system in this and a task force commanders uh, group of uh, offices and, 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 and a deck similar to what we have on the Ticonderoga. This is a 13,000 ton ship. They built four of them at once and so they are in the water. Four more are building and we expect they'll probably build up to 20 or maybe 24 of these vessels. So what you're going to see with the Chinese ultimately is 20 or 24 of these large Ticonderoga type vessels. They're newer than the Ticonderoga. How good they are electronically, we don't know, but they appear to be very capable ships. 
They're going to have up to 30 of the one on the end there, the type 052D. They'll keep the six 052Cs. So that'll be 36 more. Uh, 36 and 24 comes up with 60 vessels. These others, they have two of those two types and four of those. So that's eight more modern destroyers that they are outfitting uh, to last a longer time. So you're going to look at 60 to 70 very good surface combat uh, ships that the Chinese had. And this is how they got there. They started with their own uh, rather weak destroyer in the Type 052, replaced it or went on beyond it with the Sovremini ships from Russia, which are decent destroyers and uh, quite capable. They built a destroyer like it in the Type 052B, uh, excuse me, Type 050. Yeah, Type 051B, and then they built the Type 052B, which is in the middle. They built two of those. Stop building those when their uh, uh, gas turbine engine worked out fine on the Type 052C, which they have six of. And then they upgraded that with larger uh, APARS radar, a larger main gun a different vertical launch system more akin to the MK-41 and that turned into the O-52D which they'll end up with probably about 30 of them which will be their main destroyer and then they built this large class destroyer which will be the centerpiece particularly of their aircraft carrier groups in terms of defense so this is Jeff Head with an explanation on the surface combatant capabilities of the People's Liberation Army Navy, or if you would rather, the Chinese Navy, the Communist Chinese Navy. And uh, those are the ships that they are fielding, and they are the ones that uh, U.S. Navy surface combatants and submarines and aircraft carriers would face off against if there, God forbid, ever was uh, a contest there in the Western Pacific. But we have to remember that both the Koreans, the Japanese, and the Australian, albeit their navies are smaller, they have very strong capabilities. And the Japanese particularly have a good 40 to 50 very decent surface combatants, several of them being Aegis ships that they have worked with the United States to build. And uh, they now have two carriers sporting uh, F-35Bs, each of which can carry up to 24 of those. And that, uh, that's uh, nothing to scoff at. That's a very powerful uh, capability. And the Koreans are doing the same with their Docto. So there you have it, the evolution of the modern uh, People's Liberation Army Navy. This is Jeff Hitt. Take a look at the channel. If you are so inclined, please subscribe and tell your friends about it. Thanks. Bye-bye.